I was born in Los Angeles in a house in a canyon that was in a nest of palm trees that casted these thin unmoving shadows like prison bars it was very California gothic I I'm very California Gothic. I am the child of those people that you used to see in the ads for cigarettes in the back of Life magazine. Those handsome people that were always wearing terry cloth robes and and penny loafers, smoking cigarettes, looking like they just heard the funniest joke of their life. The Marlboro man met the Virginia Slims woman and had me. Taylor Negrin, a great actor, writer, and artist, passed away last week at a young age. We're very sorry to see him go. And uh, as you will see in the upcoming video, Taylor did a TED talk. He's been a character actor and a leading man for a number of years. And uh, he appeared in so many different movies, television shows, and uh, also uh, uh, the comedian. He toured as a stand-up for many years as well, in between everything else he did. And he was a painter and a sculptor, and a really great guy. In this upcoming video, you'll see what I'm talking about. Taylor Negri. She was the first person to ever get in trouble for twerking. I became a stand-up because of Mae West. I nurtured my nature and she became my guide. And here is the saga. When I was at the comedy store, I would perform stand-up, writing my own words. And there was a picture of Mae West in the audience. When that light came on, it meant that I had to leave the stage. I'd be in my dressing room and somebody would say, the Mae West is on and I'd walk on stage. When I was on The Tonight Show, which was so exciting, they cut away from me to a caricature of Mae West that said, more to come. And that just kind of blew me away. Crescendo commercial. This larger than life angel is my personal sister honky tonk. And I went into the movies and I was blessed because I was able to write the things that I was able to say. And people stop me and they say, hey, you're that guy. And then they quote me. And I realized it was because of Mae West. We are just little stars revolving around each other. Sometimes we bump into, you know, kind of rogue comets and asteroids and we get kicked off our orbit. But I believe that when we get kicked off and we go into a new orbit, that it may be a shortcut home. And home is not a place. It's a silent nest where we can apply the things that we learned from our nature and from our angels. Um, thank you for being here and listening to me. And you get to be now, see something that um, really is kind of amazing because it's a singular moment. Um, Mae West led me to put my pen to paper. She was behind me when I wrote this. And it happened at Cape A lot of people always said about the actor Taylor Negri, you know, he was a renaissance man, a renaissance artist. He was an actor, he was a comedian, a writer, a painter, and a sculptor. And I have here a uh, sketch Taylor Negri did of me. Back in 1998, on a film we both worked on together, uh, I played the part of an assistant prosecuting attorney a small role. Taylor, of course, had a much bigger and memorable role. But I got to work with him for oh, like probably four or five days on the film. It was a Kirk Cameron movie back in 98 called Oh Lucky Dog. Well, in between shots, Taylor and I would hang out and talk, and he coached me a bit on acting. 
but he also took time to to draw this within about, oh, I don't know, 15 minutes. Very talented guy, and I've had it all these years. And uh, even back then I had the smarts to make him sign it, because he has become a great painter. This is Taylor Negrin's display at the Lemley Theater in Santa Monica. People find it difficult to be present and relaxed in the reading. But I'm not painting them. I'm painting them and the precise moment in time. A shadow moves across their eyebrows. Their glance takes their nose, and it's gone. The moment's over. My subjects always say things like, you made me look like my father, or why am I so depressed? Once a friend was so distraught about the way I painted her, she told me that I was cruel and should seek psychiatric help. Painting helps you only see what is real. The extraordinary ordinariness that goes beyond boredom. I never knew any artist when I was little. I didn't even know you could be an artist. I just thought I was. My name is Taylor Negro, and this is why I painted. Fast Times in Ridgemont High, 1982. Taylor Negrin, again, steals the scene. Again? Keep the guy, sir. Pour the devil's cheese and sausage. Right here, dude. Right here, dude. Am I hallucinating here? The Last Boy Scout with Bruce Willis and Damon Wayans. Here's Taylor Negrin playing a really evil guy. He's been accredited um, by a lot of good film critics with just doing such a great job as an evil man, which is a departure from his other character stuff. Good morning, Joseph. Joseph, you don't disappoint me. Hand him the briefcase, Joseph. After his death, the police will receive a photograph of you, Joseph. A flash? Rescue attempt? Blow me. You must be James. James? He does that with everybody. He calls me Joseph. I trust you're alone. Here's the film, Better Off Dead, 1985, with John Cusack. I bet you. Your book on how to pick up trashy women came today. Tell me something. What's a little boy like you doing with big boy smut like this? Hi, Lane. I was just wondering. I mean, I know that we don't even know each other, but I know that you were going out with that girl, Beth, and I can see that you're not going out with her anymore, and I was wondering if...
comedian actor Richard Belzer asks Taylor about writing his play, Jack and the Masses. What is your fascination with her? It's about class, right? It's and about class. I feel like I connect with her in the sense that I'm from also the backwater of the Victorian era. Growing up in Pasadena and my family is kind of well healed right. so education was kind of important mm -hmm. and you know people who read and have a larger scope to draw from well she said you know you know when jack was writing profiles and courage i was translating all of mousy to she actually from the french translated a lot of, of, of the doctrines of, of, of Indonesia and of Vietnam, you know, before when Vietnam was won, um, and, and such an integral part of be, b bringing genuine taste and excellence to this country. Mm -hmm. But Jack, she, Ken yeah. Jack Kennedy was a guy that, um, it's an insight into our president, who you love so much. And I remember you, you know, you, you see, I, give, give us some of the things that she said about him. She says, um, you know, I don't want anyone to think that Jack was in pain, but he, he, he was in awful pain. He never knew when the spasms were going to come. And it was, you know, we were out there campaigning, you know, having a milkshake and a hot dog. Hot <laughs> dog. <laughs> having a milkshake and a hot dog. Taylor was an intellectual, but he disarmed you with humor. He could be overwhelming to people meeting him for the first time, and he could be perceived as an elitist, but he was never a snob. Over the years I knew him, I was always impressed to see how he could easily talk with people from all walks of life. Taylor had a lot of friends of all kinds. I remember at time, Taylor had some friends visiting him in Los Angeles who had recently written a stage play and were uh, appearing in the show. Taylor had procured a ticket for me to see the show and it was heady stuff, too intellectual for me and for its own good, I thought. Taylor saw the play the following night, and we talked about it, and I was very impressed by the fact that he wasn't afraid to admit that the play was over his head and he couldn't understand it either. He was not an intellectual phony. The Rodney Dangerfield movie, 1983's Easy Money. Taylor plays Julio in this scene. Take a look. You're coming down. I am so bad. Be angry. I am so bad. What are you talking to? Look at my arm. And a head. I'm so bad. I should be in detention. Oh, no. It's me. Where's your arm? Where's your arm? Where's your arm? I got the guy about. Let's go. Start playing around in a driveway of a truck house. I'm not going to lose my temper in front of a woman that I love. Taylor Negrin, in the 1988 movie Punchline, where he plays one of the lead comedians in the group with uh, veteran actors Sally Field and Tom Hanks, and I want to say two words. That's all. The show is finished. I don't know. I'm on next. You know what I like to do sometimes? I like to piss off Iranians. I like to piss off Middle Eastern people. It's called punk terrorism. And what I do, right, is I go downtown to carpet stores, and I walk into the place and I say, Hi, I want carpet, but I don't have the square footage. And the Iranian guy will say, You don't want carpet. You want an Arab. 
And I say, no, I don't want that. <laughs> These people are like really born bald eagles. You know, it's like. <laughs> You know, you just write work. <laughs> and, 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 and I call this, uh, what is it called? Rent control trauma. Rent control trauma. <laughs> and that's my favorite. Let's leave it at that. Yeah. Thank you very much for uh, going to the closet stone and look at them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I feel that it's important as an artist to like let it be sprinkled out, like music or, or movies or whatever art, you sprinkle it out and you give it out willy-nilly, and it's part of your legacy, and it's, it's wild because somebody bought a painting that's very important to me. Yay. But it's not really yay, it's very sad. <laughs>